Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a look at how Lightroom and Photoshop work together. Now I'm going to assume that you've made all of the changes that you want to your individual file and now it's time to take that image farther by taking it into Photoshop. And there's a variety of reasons you might want to do this. You might want to layer more than one image together or you might need to do some retouching or maybe some head swapping in a family portrait. Well, before we just jump to Photoshop, let's take a look at the preferences in Lightroom so that we know what kind of file Lightroom is going to build. Underneath the Lightroom menu, I'll go down to Preferences. If you were on Windows, you'd go into the Edit menu and then select your Preferences. And I'm going to click on the External Editing Preferences. You can see that these are the default settings when you decide to edit in. So I've told Lightroom that I want it to hand off a PSD file. I could choose TIFF, but in this case I'll select PSD. I want it to be in Adobe RGB 1998 color space, and I want it to be 16 bits at 300 pixels per inch. You can modify these to whatever you want, just know that these will be the default settings. Now in a minute we're going to come back and talk about the rest of the settings in here, but for now I'll close this and then choose Photo, Edit In, or I could use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control E, and that will edit this image in Photoshop. Now currently the version of Camera Raw in Lightroom is a little ahead of the one in Photoshop, but I still want to open this so I'll click Open anyway. We can see that Lightroom opened up or handed off to Photoshop a 16-bit image, and down here we can check and see that it is in the Adobe RGB 1998 color space. So that's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very drastic change to the image. I'm just going to invert it by using Command I or Control I on Windows. Just want to make sure that we can tell the difference between our original and this PSD file. But the odd thing is, is that it doesn't tell me it's a PSD file yet. It tells me it's a DNG file. Because Lightroom has handed off this image, this photograph, to Photoshop, but it hasn't saved it to the disk yet, which is a really good thing because sometimes you might want to open like three or four images at a time in Photoshop in order to decide which ones you're going to work with or composite together. And a lot of times I close a lot of those images and I don't need those files rendered. So I don't really want Lightroom to save those files. I just want it to hand off to Photoshop. I'll use the ones I want and then save that. So in this case I've made my change here. Let's save it by just using Command or Control S. And because I started with a raw file, I know I'm not going to save over my original file. If I was starting with a JPEG file, well then when I said edit in Photoshop, Lightroom would have provided a dialog box asking me if I wanted to open a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. Well certainly I went to all that trouble to make those adjustments in Lightroom, so I would select that option and Lightroom would then change the name and it's opening a copy so I don't have to worry about saving over the original. So I'll go ahead and do a Command or Control S in order to save this file. As soon as I do that, then Photoshop writes it to the disk and you can see it's now a PSD file and it's added this underscore ME and that's a custom file naming convention that I've created and I'll show you how I did that in a minute. For now, let's simply close this. We'll return back to Lightroom and you can see here's my original DNG file and here is that PSD file. So because I started in Lightroom and I said edit in, I saved the file in Photoshop when I was finished Lightroom can keep track of that workflow and so it automatically imported that file not only into the Lightroom catalog but also into this collection that I was working in. All right, now let's go back to those preferences for a minute because sometimes you might want to take your images over to Photoshop like we just did, a 16-bit image in Adobe 1998, but other times maybe you want different settings. In order to create presets, you simply choose the application. In this case, I would click Choose and choose Photoshop because that's what I want to open the files into with this preset. And then I would select the file format. I'll choose PSD again, but this time I'm going to choose sRGB for my color space and 8-bit for my bit depth. Then where it says Preset, I'll save this as a new preset. I'll call it PSD, sRGB, and 8-bit. Then I'll click Create. Now before we take a look at where that preset appears, let's also look at the other options. There's an option to stack with original, which means that when you bring the image back into Lightroom, those images will automatically be stacked on top of each other. 
and there's an option to rename your files when you bring the files over to Photoshop. So what I did is I just went in and edited the preset here, and I left the file name the same, but I told Lightroom to just append that with an underscore ME. The reason that it had an ME-2 after it in the example that I showed you was because it was the second time that I'd opened that file, and it remembered that it had already opened that other image and made a copy of it. All right, so now that I've got my file naming convention here, and I've set my stack with original actually to off, because I don't care for that. I like to see them both next to each other as opposed to hiding one behind the other. And we've made our preset. Let's go ahead and close this. And now watch what happens. If I select my original DNG file again, and I right mouse click and I say edit in, I now have a new option here, which is that preset. So I could go ahead and use that preset to open this in Photoshop with these settings. And of course, I could also use a different external editor, right? I could set this up if I wanted to take my image from Lightroom into Painter and create maybe a more painterly effect. I could set that up as my preset, as my external editor. All right, so that's great when I'm working with maybe just one or two images. But what if I'm done with, you know, 50 images and I want to take them into Photoshop or I want to hand them off to someone who's going to do the retouching for me? Well, when I have a large number of images, I would want to select those images. So let's go maybe to my Develop Module Collection, select all, and then I would click Export. And in the Export Module, now I've got a ton of options for how I want to save or export these images. I can select the export location. So in this case, it would be interesting, I could export them to the same folder as the original photo, but remember, this is a collection of images, and so I would have each image being saved back to maybe a different folder. That may or may not be what I want. So I can change this and say, no, let's pick a specific folder. Then I can choose the folder that I want to save to. In this case, let's go ahead and save them into my 2011 into Ireland. And let's make a new folder, and we'll call this export and PSD. I'll choose Create, and then Choose. And I have the option now to add these images back into the catalog. So after exporting, if you want to see those images again, add them to the catalog. If you're exporting them and you're going to hand them off to someone and you don't need them in your catalog, then you could uncheck this. But for now, let's go ahead and add this to the catalog. As far as the existing files, um, this has to do with renaming. I would just prompt it to ask you what you want to do if you were renaming the, the files the same name as the original. It probably won't happen, but just in case, I want it to ask me. As far as file naming, we could rename the files on export. So right here, I might also want to choose that master edited option that I set up in the presets, or we could change it to anything we want. If I had video, I could include video files, but I don't. As far as file settings go, here's where I would select my PSD. I'd select my color space. So let's say in this case we want to go to sRGB and 8-bit. And I can also resize these images. So maybe I don't need to send them the full res. Maybe instead I could go in and pick the long edge. Maybe the longest edge, either horizontally or vertically, might be 8 inches. So I'll choose that and the resolution. I can also choose to add output sharpening. Now, if I'm going to have someone retouch these images, or if I'm going to do a lot of work in Photoshop, I probably don't want to sharpen now. But if I was going to export all of these and send them directly to my lab, then I might want to go ahead and sharpen them for whatever paper type I'm printing to. For now, I'll leave that off. Under Metadata, I want to include at least my copyright and contact information. Um, the reason that you might narrow this down is if you are exporting and you're going to put the images on the web, you might want to make that file as small as possible. So you might not want to include all of that metadata, but I definitely want the copyright and contact information. I can add a watermark if I want to, which would be like an overlay of my logo. 
But for now, I'm, I'm not going to because I'm going to do more editing on these. And then under post-processing, for now I'll do nothing, but I could actually show those images in the Finder. I could open them up in Photoshop. I could open them in a different application. And then you'll notice I have some other options, but that's a little bit more advanced. You can actually create an action in Photoshop, turn it into a droplet, and then when you're done exporting your files from Lightroom, you can automatically have Photoshop launch and run that action on those files. But I have another video on that, so we're not going to cover it now. All right, once you've got all of these options set up, you should definitely add a preset if you think you're going to use these options again. So I would click Add, and we can put this in a new folder, and we'll call this just my demo folder for now. And now we can name the preset. So in this case, I would probably want to make sure that I know the settings. So for example, that I'm exporting to PSD, that it's in the sRGB workspace, that it has an 8-inch long edge, and that it's 300 pixels per inch. So use the naming convention that makes sense to you, and then click Create, and you can see that preset has been created right here. All right, then we would just simply click Export, and it would export all of those files with all of those settings. Before I click Export, I just want to also point out up here at the top where it says Export To, we can export to email. This is kind of interesting. What it does is it, it kind of forces you to use JPEG as the file format. We can export to a CD or a DVD. And we can also choose to export to Adobe Revel. So if you're using Revel on your cell phone or on your tablet device, you can very quickly take the images that you've worked on in Lightroom and export them into your carousel so that you can share them with other people. OK, for now, I'm not going to take the time to export the file, so I'll hit Cancel, because I just want to talk about three other options. And let's switch to another folder for this. And I'm going to select this whole range of images right here. This is a panorama. Well, you'll notice if you right mouse click and you choose Edit In, as soon as you have more than one file selected, you have these other options down here. So for example, I could merge to Panorama in Photoshop, in which case Lightroom would take these images, hand them off to Photoshop, and it would, it would apply all of the changes that you've made in Lightroom, including all of your lens correction, and then make that panorama in Photoshop. All right, and you can see I'm not going to take the time to do it, but Photoshop creates the panorama and re-imports it back into Lightroom. Going back to grid view, I have these three different exposures of the same scene. If I right mouse click and say edit in, you'll notice that I can also merge these to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Or if I wanted to merge together maybe two different files like this first one and this one, if I want to put them into the same file in Photoshop, so take two photos and put it into a single Photoshop document, then I can choose Edit In, and we can open it as layers in Photoshop. And finally, the last option is to open as a smart object in Photoshop. And smart objects are fantastic because they give you a ton of flexibility. What this option does is it actually opens the files into Photoshop, but it what it does is it embeds the entire raw file, if you're starting with a raw file, it embeds that whole raw file into the Photoshop or the PSD file. It's kind of like the PSD file becomes the candy wrapper and it holds all that raw data. So that if you change your mind while you're working on that file, like you might want to change it to grayscale or you want to change the color temperature, all you'd have to do is double click on the smart object in Photoshop and it would actually bring up the camera raw technology, same technology that is in Lightroom. It would bring up that technology in Photoshop and you could make those changes and it would be completely non-destructive. So there are additional videos that talk all about smart objects, but I did just want to mention that because it is a very, very cool feature. Well, there's a quick look at some of the different ways that you can take your images from Lightroom to Photoshop and continue working on them from there. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching. Thank you.